what to determine the slope of the lines defined by each of these tables. The dependent variable is the dollar amount and the independent variable are the hours. And so if we look at table 1, we're going to say that the ch we're going to see that the change in y each time is 10. And we're going to see that the change in x each time is 1. So we would have a slope equal to 10 over 1. Table 2, we have a constant change in the y, or the dependent variable, of 15. And a change in the x of 1. So the slope in table 2 is 15 over 1. Change in y over change in x. So if we would graph these, we would expect that the line from table 2 would have a much steeper slope because the vertical change or the rise is growing faster with 15 compared to the rise of 10 on table 1. But how do we determine if these tables represent direct variation functions? If we remember correctly, direct variation functions have to meet two requirements. One is it must pass through the origin. And it has a direct variation constant, k, which is equal to y over x. If we manipulate that equation, uh, we also see that a direct variation equation is written in the form y equals kx, where k is the slope of the line. So if we think about those tables without graphing them, do the slope on each of those equal y over x? So if we go back to table 1, and we look at, um, for example, this first ordered pair, 235. Does the slope equal y over x? So if, if it does, then it would be a direct variation function. So in order for table 1 to represent a direct variation function, 35 over 2 must equal 10. Well, it doesn't. So, no, this is not a direct variation function. Because 35 over 2 does not equal 10. If we take a look at table 2, let's see if that meets the requirement. Let's take the first point. 2 over uh, 230. Does that equal the slope? Well, 30 over 2 does indeed equal 15 over 1. So yes, this is a direct variation function because that holds true for each one of the other points. 45 over 3, 60 over 4, and 75 over 5. So Table 2 is a direct variation function. If we would go b and um, check out the graph, then we could find a couple other ordered pairs and see if indeed it follows the pattern to go through 0, 0. If we would go back in time and in dollar amounts, if we follow this pattern, our 
from 30, and we subtract 15, this would be a y value of 15. And then finally, 0. And if we go back in time, this would be our 1, and then at our 0. So here is my point, 0, 0. So that's the second criteria. It does go through the origin, 0, 0. If we're not supplied with a table, but simply given an equation and asked if it's a direct variation function, we need to manipulate the given equation and try to fit it into the form y equals kx. So, for example, does 4y equal 5x represent a direct variation function. And if it does, what is k? Or in other words, what's the direct variation constant? So we need to get 4y equals 5x into the form y equals kx. So we're going to try to manipulate the equation and get the y all by itself. So in other words, what do I do to remove the coefficient 4 in front of the y? I'm going to divide by 4. And so I have y equals 5 fourths x. Yes, this fits into that pattern, and 5 fourths is k. So yes, this is a direct variation function. And I can go back and check to see if it would make sense if it goes through the origin. If I plug 0 into the original equation, the point 0, 0, so in other words, 4 times 0, does that equal 5 times 0? Yes, so that meets the second criteria for a direct variation function. Let's give another example. 2x plus 3y equals 6. Does this represent a direct variation function? Well, we can manipulate the equation to see if it fits in the form y equals kx, and we also need to verify if it goes through the point 0, 0. If I check that and I plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, does this become a true statement? Well, does 0 plus 0 equal 6? No. So this is not a direct variation function. We may be told that y varies directly with x. So we're told that we have a direct variation function, and we may be told what the value of y and x is. y is 35, for example, and x is 5. Well, if we're told y varies directly, that means we have a direct variation function. It means that our k, our direct variation constant, is y over x. So in this case, it's 35 over 5, which is equal to 7. Now I can write a direct variation equation and that is y is equal to k, which we found was 7 times x. So I have my direct variation constant, 7, and I have my equation y equals 7x.